네, 안녕하십니까? Good afternoon. CEO Im Do Hyung couldn't make it today because he had another business to attend to. My name is Kim Do Hyuk and let me talk on behalf of him. Let me start the presentation. So the name of the company is Avicus. It's a spin-off company of Hyundai Heavy Industries. And from 2021, it had a whole new start. And we call my company a startup of HHI. And it is developing autonomous solutions for ships and vessels. Safety, convenience, and profits for customers. These are our focuses, and we want to change the paradigm of the shipping industry. Before Hyundai Heavy Industries had spin-off companies like Avicus, it was focused on developing autonomous technologies. And we started back in 2017 to, to develop various solutions. And 2019, we had some commercialized solutions. And in 2021, with all these technologies, we started our company. So automation, autonomous technology, these are the things that we put our focus on. And we want to change the targets of our autonomous navigation. And among these topics, my presentation will be focused on how these technologies are being utilized in the industry. Before we talk about the technologies first, I'm going to touch up on the concept of autonomous vessels. IMO, a few years ago, had four different levels in terms of its autonomous levels and the definition or definition of classification of the levels can be straightforward but at the same time it can be very vague because it's not always easy to clear to draw a clear line and many things have to be automated so we see many companies consortia and at a country level we see that Many different players have different classification of autonomous levels. But what we at Avicus is focused on is we want to focus on assisting humans. So we have the issue of insurance policies and responsibility issue. So ultimately, we are going to see full fully autonomous technologies, but even though we follow this direction, we want to take a more step-by-step -step approach. When it comes to core technologies or key technologies, there are different steps. First, it starts with detection, sensing. So it's like eyes, human eyes. And second, situation analysis. So by having data received from eyes, we understand the situation. The third stage is planning. To put it differently, it can be understood as decision. On the basis of information and data, you decide how you're going to act. So up until this point, this is about monitoring and assisting the humans. And the actual control which is the fourth stage, replaces navigation and actual operation. So we have to complete the four stages so that we can be fully autonomous. In the big commercial ships and also in leisure boat solutions, Abacus is covering both of the areas. And even though technologies can be slightly different, the core technologies are basically the same. And the proven technology can be transferred to other types of vessels. 
That's why we entered the leisure boat business section. Hainas was developed for big commercial ships, and that stands for Navigation Assistance System. And in the middle, you can see high bass. And also, Hainas 2.0 includes control. Hainas is Navigation Assistant, so a bridge and crew members' activities are assisted using HINAS. Cameras and detected data. We're using this information to understand what kind of risks we have, and, we and the information is assisted. And this image shows what the user sees. So it's only seen through a bridge, but in a captain's cabin. And in land, we want to be able to see this image. So that's what we are working on. But when it comes to the actual levels, well, there can be some limitations. But if we can achieve this, I believe that we can reduce the number of crew members. And going forward, we believe that we can move towards fully autonomous. Second, high bus. General navigation information and also the movement at the key wall. Well, these two cases are very different, and the speed of vessels will be different and different talk vessels will be used. So we need an intuitive image as a result. So this looks like an around view for vehicles, but unlike views for automotive vehicles, we use more cameras with more cables to show unique images for ships only. And this can be used for container ships, the CPC. And this technology is quite popular with these vessels. So based on retrofitting the vessels, this technology is introduced to such users. And this HINAS 2.0 includes the concept of control. So instead of just getting support from the system, this is about giving control. And instead of replacing what we have, what we want to achieve is the software or the algorithm of our software is connected to the existing systems to control. So it's not replacing equipment, but it's to replace the judgment of a captain or a crew member. Well, at the moment, well, the level of development is not really replacing their judgment, but currently we are able to provide assistance for them. And if it's a month long navigation, then we can first start with one week or two weeks of assistance so that we can expand that assistance, not just for big commercial ships, but for small leisure boats, we can use this technology. And we are developing technologies for these leisure boats. So actually, the technology can be sometimes simpler, but it can be risky from time to time because it is light in weight and it is less stable. So we are diversifying the types so that we can adjust the technologies. So first, starting with small vessels, we can expand to include more larger vessels, including ferries and so on. And the core technologies for large commercial ships can be applied to small leisure boats as well. And in developing 
these technologies, we also have to prove that these technologies work. So we do the tests, which take which takes a lot of time. And in order to communicate with our subcontractors and customers, we have this major event. In 2022, in June, we retrofitted a small vessel. And this is the actually unmanned cruise that we did in Pohang area. And we learned lots of things from this voyage and on the right hand side like the LADA, ARS, we use lots of sensors to control this boat. And also we made a trans Pacific voyage from Houston to Boryong, Korea. And four researchers are on board and for one month voyage well, for the first week, we had a technical interview with captains and crew members, and we had tests during that time. And in the later part for two weeks, there was no intervention and the navigation was done autonomously. And regarding the weather conditions and communications with the land and the status of cargoes, all this general information was collected. And that was a very good lessons learned. And we believe that we learned more things than what we can learn from sales. So 350 hours for 10,000 kilometers and 100 encounters where the actual figure is much higher. But anyway, we saw that the ship stuck to its route and sometimes it made avoidance. And also we wanted to make sure that how fuels can be reduced. And we wanted to learn what would be the optimum RPM for fuel efficiency. And we tried the recommended RPM at the request of a captain. And we saw the possibility of connecting optimal navigation with autonomous navigation. So our strategy that started with 2019 was in full, full bloom in 2021. And now we are putting these technologies into vessels but we need to make sure that stability of, and reliability of these technologies are guaranteed and we're working with classification societies. And for navigation assistance, we do not have performance criteria, so it has to be done for each case and we're working with MOF and the Korean Register to work on these approvals and certification. Hyundai Heavy Industries takes an order for more than 100 vessels every year. And we build new ships and also there are commercial ships that are being built in China. And also delivery is done to other domestic shipyards. And on the basis of this data, I believe that we can have more track record using these technologies. And the thing that I didn't want to miss out on was, well, many consortia and many other partners are working on this in the UK and in Europe on the basis of these technologies. And even if they do not have such technologies yet, they are working on the standard standardization documents. If we can collaborate closely, more closely regarding the future technologies that we are going to utilize, I believe that Korea can lead the technologies, but not just a technology leader, but we can also be a leader 
in regulations and certification. And in that regard, I believe that we can work even closely with relevant parties in this field. So that is the end of my presentation.